Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so pleased to welcome to the show today, Mayara Souza. Mayara is a sound therapist. She does sound healing. And it's so incredibly fascinating to me. I got into sound healing many, many years ago, well into my spiritual awakening. And I learned about it. I think my first experience may have been with crystal bowls or uh, it may have even been drumming, I think. It was a combination of things. But since then, I use chimes, many different things, of course, music. And for my hypnotherapeutic recordings, I often use alpha waves, music embedded, alpha waves embedded into the music. Mayara grew up in Brazil, uh, and she has overcome very adverse, very traumatic childhood. And she had, you know, very difficult history there, which she'll speak about. She's very generous, very open to talk about her history. And because she is helping people. So, you know, Mayara shares her experience because she helps in that way. And she's going to tell you all about it. So she's a certified sound therapist and she's a holistic wellness practitioner. And I wanted to speak to her because she uses acoustic sound, this natural sound with all holistic practices. And it helps her clients to deeply relax to regulate their nervous system, to release energy blocks. Music can do that. Emotions, and also emotions can get trapped in the body, which is why certainly in my practice, yes, we talk about logistics and therapy. We talk about the cause. We talk about, we talk about theory. However, you do have to do some work, and a lot of it needs to be body work because I'm a holistic therapist, mind, body, soul, mind, body, spirit. And so we can theorize all day long, but you do have to go away and do some bits. If it's writing, if it's running, walking, yoga, something to get your body engaged, to release this stuff. And this is why when I spoke to the lovely, wonderful Richard Atherton, he was talking about primal scream therapy, what he had in California, which was wonderful. I'm a huge proponent of it. I think it works. And that's because it really did engage the core of your being. Went way back to the womb. And this rebirthing can do a similar thing. And I've seen it work for people. And it goes back to that primal. It's primal therapy, primal scream, back to the womb. Sometimes parents are so stressed out or suffering even from abuse whilst you're in a womb, you will be taking that on board through your mother's um, DNA, biology, however, there are any type of hormones that are being excreted at that time, whatever she's feeling, you'll be taking that on board. And if you've had a difficult birth as well, let's say by forceps, or any other way, if it was just very, very hard, very difficult, it was a long, long labor, lots of different things. If you were quite, felt quite awake, why you, but you couldn't come out, all that stuff happens with birthing. And that's why it should never be taken for granted either. Sometimes it's not safe to give birth, as you all know. And, but that is something that, Mayara can help with. No, I'm not talking about the birthing process, but the issue of engaging your body with your mind and your soul. And this will help to balance things out. If one bit is out of whack, and I don't know if we're always balanced. I believe in the 24 hours that we have every day, you may have perhaps, if, if, you're, if you're good, if, if you've had a good day, four hours, five hours of feeling quite balanced. On some days, maybe none. You don't feel balanced until you're asleep. And even then there could be nightmares, worry, waking up. It's a process. So she helps people to balance themselves with the use of sound. So she's going to talk about that. We talk about, um, we talk about uh, tuning forks. 
I mentioned a tuning fork in my uh, video about trinkets don't make you spiritual and Mayara tells us how and why a tuning fork does help and it's brilliant I she she does so much work she moves around a lot she has lots of workshops and she helps people a lot out in the community and where she she's moving now but where she was in Florida uh, there's lots of pictures on her website of her engaging lots of people teaching them how to meditate how to use sound so it's fascinating she has got some great tidbits to help you so without further ado let's welcome mayara to the show <laughs> Mayara, thank you so much for joining me today it's lovely to see you lovely to see you too Sha. thank you for having me i appreciate it oh it's my pleasure now i love sound therapy I, I was trying, preparing for this interview, I thought, when did I first hear about sound therapy? I think I, about late 80s, I think I heard, I've been around for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I When I trained as a holistic therapist in the 90s, that's when I really, that's when I had my first experience with sound therapy and drums and crystal bowls and uh, mm -hmm. forks and all sorts of, oh, it's fantastic. So I want to ask you, can you tell us what is sound therapy? So sound therapy on, on its own has been around for thousands of years. They have used sound for healing to readjust the cells back into, into harmony and all that and bring the, the system back into harmony, which brings health into the body and the mind. But we have been... I would say like rediscovering in, in this past, I don't know, probably century or so, I don't know when, when they were doing the researches back then. It's just, it's this forgotten technology that we went on, you know, hundreds of years without necessarily like focusing on it. But it's quite interesting how similar it is to other technologies that we also use. I like to compare it to acupuncture, for instance. Acupuncture uses the needles to release blocks of energy within the physical body. And, and that brings release to whatever it is, the issue that the person shows up with, right? We do pretty much the same thing, but with sound. We release blocks of energy in the body so that the body can go back into the, the, the circulation the way it's meant to be circulating the energy is supposed to be flowing through us through our bodies and sometimes it's not because there's blockages there's whatever it is traumatic experiences whatever it is that accidents that causes the blocks and then the, if the energy is not flowing the way it's meant to flow it creates illnesses it creates unease within the body and within the mind so we do a pretty similar type of work that is releasing whatever it is that's blocking the energy from flowing throughout the body, throughout the whole body, the organs, everything that, that needs to have the energy flowing through it. We just release the blocks, the blocks in the body to be able to flow. So the energy can flow and the body can be healthy. The mind can be healthy. We come into harmony. Well, that's a great explanation because it is about mind, body, and soul, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's a triad, I like to call it. Mm -hmm. And why is it that sound? I mean, human beings, it's funny, we have two real big fears, probably our biggest fears as humans is uh, loud noises and also mm -hmm. fear of falling. Many people know this. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's interesting that sound, you know, loud noises, or with sound, it really can affect us physically, mm -hmm. physiologically, mentally, psychically. Why is it that sound has such an effect upon us? Well, if you think about it, we are sound. We are vibration, right? On the atomic level, we are just little balls of energy vibrating. So that vibration must be in harmony with the whole, right? If something happens that takes that harmony away and we become out of alignment with the whole, it, it, it's what creates this unease and, and all the all this stuff that, that happens. And you're absolutely right. Like we talk about how much sound has a profound effect on the physical body, on our mental state and everything. You think about like a song, how much a song can touch you. 
right in a positive way or it can stress you out so much that you know you have to go and you have to shut it off so it does have a huge effect on us because it's it, like one of the first things actually that got me interested on studying sound for healing it was epigenetics the 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 effect that our environment has on the cell right and if you think about it the the within the cell is just a little ball of energy vibrating right so anything that is vibrating in our environment is having a, a wave that is coming and having an effect on, on all of our cells. And so we react in a certain way. So if the sound is, like I said, it's noise and it's loud and, and it's, it, it, the body doesn't like it that way. It's out of harmony. It's the frequencies are out of harmony. The body will have a negative reaction to that. It's like I said, it can bring up fear and whatever it is that gets triggered within us. What we do is the opposite of that. We use frequencies that are harmonized in a certain way that will bring harmony back into the organs, into the tissues, into the muscles, into everything within the body. And that harmony is what's going to dissipate whatever it is, the tension, the stress that is within the body, within the cells, that is causing whatever it is that we are treating. So we are doing the opposite of the loud noises that you said. We're bringing in a, a harmonic frequency that's going to bring everything back into balance. And then we see the results and the benefits that we see from it. You know, better sleep, better digestion, uh, the, the reactions that we have to the world around us, they come from this tension and the stress that we have in our nervous system. Once we deeply relax our nervous system and release these tensions and the stresses from the system, there's no reaction anymore. There is a more grounded response to what's happening in the environment. So we're doing the complete opposite of what you're saying, like the loud noises. We're bringing in this nice harmonic frequency to balance everything out back into harmony. Yes, excellent. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. And uh, why would someone seek out a sound therapy? Yeah, so we focus a lot on the relaxation because we believe that from that is how the system will come back into harmony, into alignment, and, and bring everything back into balance. So if everything is balanced, we're going to sleep the way we're meant to. We're going to sleep through the night and the body will have this opportunity to do its own self reparation and, and all that it happens while we are out of the way, while we are sleeping. And then with that happening, we're going to have a balanced digestive system, a balanced thinking process. We're going to have clarity. We're going to have all of those things. And from that space, everything that's out of balance within the body, it starts coming back into balance. Like people have chronic pain, a lot of the times there's an emotional aspect to it that's stuck in there, in that area, and we have that too. We have directions of each area we're going to work on in the body, depending on what it is that the person is looking for as, you know, to treat. So it, coming from this space of balance that you're sleeping well, your digestive system is working well, your thinking is coming back into clarity and, and everything is getting adjusted in that way. All of those things that are symptoms, they start dissipating, they start disappearing because whatever it is that's causing it gets resolved with the use of the sound for the nervous system to relax. So we notice this even like with um, doctors visit in, in clinics and in hospitals or however, um, they are noticing that the majority of the doctor's visits are uh, related to something that is a stress. The root of everything is some sort of a stress. It can be chemical, it can be mental, it can be physical. There is some sort of a stress that's the root of the problem that they are going to visit the doctor for. So when we get the nervous system into this profound state of relaxation, we release that stress that's causing the symptom. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I like to differentiate from other qualities of sound, of working with sound. Like if you go and you have a sound bath, for mm -hmm. instance, we look at it as it's like, it's very, it's very cool. It's very interesting. It's relaxing and everything. But I look at it as like, it's very broad. You know, it's just this, this um, relaxation that you have, but you are not necessarily intentionally focusing and addressing something specific. 
like we do when the client shows up and they, you know, they have chronic pain, they have problem with digestive system, or they're depressed, or they have anxiety. They have a big study now with anxiety with the method that we use with the tuning forks that after only three sessions, people are diminishing their symptoms from anxiety. They do, they see a psychologist before and they do the tests and they are uh, labeled, you know, which is kind of who you ask, right? But they are labeled as chronic anxious people. And then they do, they get three sessions done to them and they go through the same test again and they don't have those symptoms anymore because the system gets so much back into balance, back into harmony and so relaxed that all of this stuff, all the tension, the contraction, the stress that was causing all the symptoms, they get released. People notice, like we talk with them after sessions and we ask, you know, what are they noticing different than from the beginning of the session? And they know, notice is spaciousness, you know, lightness. There's more space for the energy to flow through them. And with that energy flowing the way it's meant to, all the, the stuff, all the thinking, all the stuff that was causing the symptoms of anxiety, they're not there anymore because now there's this space for life to just happen through them. It's a very interesting process. It, it still blows my mind the things that people notice improvement. A lot of people say they feel happier. But then again, if you are taking a lot of baggage from, from your back, you know, a lot of contraction, a lot of stress, a lot of tension, and you are dropping all of that, of course you're going to feel happier. I feel like feeling happy and joyful is our natural state, but we bring in too much, you know, the world, society, culture, we, we ourselves bring in too much and it creates a lot of contraction and a lot of stress and tension and rigidity. It's hard to feel happy when you are in that way. So you come and the sound has this ability to relax your nervous system so much that you drop all of that, you release all of that tension and stress and contraction and you open up more. And then people are noticing this, that they feel more open to the world, to things to happen through them. They notice they're, re they're less reactive to the world. Things still happen, you know, around them, the things that used to piss them off or things like that. And they are having a more grounded response. They are seeing it for what it is, not bringing all the baggage to be triggered in the situation. So there is a variety of reasons why people look for this work. It can be pain, can be mental stuff that they are not really aligned. They have fog going on. They have lack of clarity, a variety of different things. Um, skin problems, they notice results because then your digestive system starts working well. It starts clearing the skin. People drop weight once they start getting back into balance this way because whatever it is that was causing them the behavior that they were accumulating the weight, that root cause of the problem is released. So they have a healthier relationship to food then. And then they notice that they start dropping the weight. It's all, what I love about this is that it's all related to going into the root of the problem. We don't treat symptoms. The symptoms are telling us that there's something wrong there that's going on on the, on the root cause, right? So we go and we align that root problem and we get to re release, discharge, whatever it is that's causing that problem. And then the symptoms disappear, but we're not focusing on the symptoms. We go to the root of the problem. It's quite fascinating. There's so many things that people look for and, and they do see the benefits and the results afterwards. Yes, it is very fascinating. What was your very first experience with sound therapy? Actually, it wasn't even with this method specific that I chose to get trained and to practice. I came across this method afterwards, but it was through meditation. On the beginning of my own journey for my own healing, almost a decade ago, I started trying to change lifestyle because what I was noticing was that I was recreating my family's lifestyle. I was very addicted to alcohol, to numb, you know, all the abuse, all the stuff that had happened in childhood, all the trauma. And I was just recreating the same things. And my father had a heart attack at 37 years old and passed away from this abuse on her body, on his body with alcohol and cigarettes and he was always like very angry and you know aggressive and all of that the body couldn't deal with that at 37 years old his heart just gave up on him 
So when I realized I was getting close to my 30s house and I was still recreating the same scenario, the same lifestyle, I started researching and that's what I was saying about epigenetics. It's one of the first things that I came across. Like the, I started researching about um, problems, like heart problems, because that was my fear. And then I came across, like people say that these conditions run in the family and what i realized with dr bruce lipton was that he was talking about how what runs in the family is the lifestyle not necessarily the condition we develop the same condition because we are following on the same lifestyle and that was a big aha moment for me i was i i felt like i had power back you know that it wasn't just destiny because i was his daughter i was destined to have a heart problem type of thing and, and then from that, I started trying to research, uh, but then how do I shift the lifestyle that is so conditioned for so many years, right? And now I'm addicted to all these things and doing all these things, all these habits and all that. And it's when I came across meditation. You want to shift your lifestyle. You want to do better things for your body, for your mind. You need to shift lifestyle. You need to start meditating. So meditation this is when I came across meditation and I came across the teaching that's like, if you, if you want to change lifestyle, you got to start taking a look at, at how you have been living. Like, what is the lifestyle that you want to shift? What are the patterns that you are in? And one of the ways that we're coming across from a, a lot of different teachers was meditation. So I started with meditation and then I, I like to explore. So I explored a whole bunch of different styles of meditation. And I noticed this pattern of the use of sound in different ways. There's guided meditation, there's mantra meditation, there's plant medicine that they do use the singing as, as a way of healing. So I started noticing this pattern, you know, and then I, I noticed the singing bowls, the tuning forks and everything. And I actually started, I worked with a variety of different meditations. Like I said, I did some work with plant medicine that was fundamental for me being able to see where I was at and be able to drop the addiction to alcohol. And from that, I started noticing, like I started meeting the right people because then I was in the circles that, you know, people were trying to release alcohol and drug problems and, and all that, that this stuff. So I kept coming across different modalities until I found this modality, modality that I just fell in love with. And the reason was that it's non-invasive and you don't have to be in person doing it. At this point, I was living in the US and I was living literally in the middle of the woods. I was pretty like isolated from the city and everything. And it was great. We were in a community, you know, there were other, other people living there and it was pretty awesome. But then I didn't want the, this difficulty of the people having to come see me or that I would have to go to the city to get to see people. So this method, we do a lot of it at a distance through Zoom. And it works just as well as in person. It's the same thing. We talk about the music that we talked about before. When you listen to a song, it could have been recorded 30 years ago. It will still touch you. You might cry, you might get emotional and all of that. It does have an effect on us. You don't need to be there present when they are recording the song for it to have an effect on you. It's pretty much the same thing that we do. We do it at the distance, we, the person is not present. We have recorded sessions that they listen to and they feel the, the energy whooshing through their bodies and releasing and then they notice the same benefits just by listening to a recorded session. So all of that was fascinating to me because it was so much easier to work that way, living where I was, that it was inconvenient for people to come see me. And as soon as I started working with it out of curiosity, like working on myself and friends and doing things like that, the benefit is very obvious. It's non-invasive and it's very gentle. It's very simple to do. And the benefits are obvious. It's like I have had people that I did the first session on them and they would say something like, and that was not just one time. I had a few people do the same thing. They would say to me like, I haven't slept through the night like this in 20 years. And then after the first session, they said, that I had this guy that he lost his meeting in the morning because he, over, he slept in, like he overslept. He never needed um, uh, an alarm to get up because he never slept, right? So we did the session and then he's like, I missed my meeting in the morning because I just slept and I just slept and I slept like I haven't slept in so many years. 
So it's like because of being so obvious and non-invasive and so easy and you can do it from your bed, you know, we just connect through Zoom or phone call or whatever it is, and you can be in your own space where your nervous system is feeling the safest. You know, there's no other place where your nervous system will relax as much as on your bed, right? And you just put your headphones and you just listen to the session and then you start noticing the results, the benefits. So that's, that's what caught my attention so intensely. And I chose this one to invest and to get trained and to continue to learn on this specific method. That's the big difference that I noticed in between all the other methods that I came across. Yes, and I do know you're fully trained as well. And I'm so glad you brought up the issue of remote sessions that you can help people remotely. You don't have yeah. to be face to face. And I know during the pandemic, there was all this rush. I mean, as a therapist, I didn't like Zoom. I didn't like doing it because I need to see people, but yeah. I easily adjusted. And yeah. now people ring and say, can I start therapy? Can I see you face to face? And at the moment, I'm not an, in a clinic um, mm -hmm. since the pandemic. I am doing all Zoom sessions. Past life regression, can we do it face to face? No. Well, is there a difference? Well, yes, there is because you don't have to drive. We're in London. Don't have to park. Yeah. Don't have to pay the congestion charge. Don't have to pay you, Les, which I won't even go into. You don't have to pay. <laughs> All people in the UK will know about it, or London will know. But you don't have to worry about those things. But it's just you mm -hmm. and me. We are face to face. We yeah. are as such, but we're not physically there. But it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. We're still connecting. And I just want to quickly say with the sound. Um, I teach, uh, well, I, I don't have workshops at the moment, but I do have spiritual development workshops. And I had one just before lockdown. And one of the guys who comes to all my workshops brought his drum. He never brings okay. his drum, but he decided to bring his drum. At the break, you know, it's a long day. We start at nine, we finish at six, long, long day. At mm -hmm. the break, he started playing his drum and nobody wanted to leave the room. <laughs> want to go to the loo or go have their lunch or and I had to say look guys you know it's a long day just go and take a quick break he can drum afterwards or something but yeah. it just resonates with people which brings me to this question for you I know you um you use acoustic sound yes and my guess is because it's natural so I don't know, but I know acoustic, it's isolated a little bit, it's natural. Why acoustics? So uh, we don't use anything electronic. Uh, our sound is produced by tuning forks and we just strike the tuning forks and the sound is it's tremendous tremendously clear and full. And it's, that's the thing, it's, it's what I was saying, like, you don't need even to be here. I do people in other countries, I've been spending some time in Brazil right now, I still do all my clients in the US, in Europe, all over the place, I have clients in New Zealand, I'm going to New Zealand in a couple of months, I continue doing all the same clients that I have been doing, and it's the same thing. So the sound is very full, it's loud, loud in, in a way that is still pleasant, it's just like full and clear, and the system receives that sound as, as this harmonized frequency that gets into the cells and it, on an atomic level it readjusts them back into, into harmony and the system uh, enjoys that. It's just like you said, if, if people hear sound that is harmonized they don't want to leave the room. They, they, they don't want to go anywhere because the system really wants to take that in. That's an excellent input for the system to rebalance itself. So there's music therapy, you know, like you're feeling in a certain way. You listen to a certain type of music, you totally shift how you're feeling. The same way that it can be a negative thing too. It can make you sad, it can put you down and all that. So it does have a huge effect on us. And the system knows when something is harmonized that it's, you know, to soak it in and use it for self-reparation. The system will do that. We will keep them in the room so they don't even go to the loo, like you said, because the system is soaking that in, you know. So we recommend to people, like sometimes I'm doing podcasts and they ask me, like, how can people do it from home? you know and if they don't get a session or something like that 
you can vocalize, you can hum, you can sing with the song, or you can just listen to songs that make you feel good. You know, pay attention to the lyrics because all of that is having an effect on your mental state as well. Even if you are not paying attention, some people say that they say, oh, I just like the melody. I'm not really paying attention to the lyrics. Yeah, you might not be consciously paying attention to the lyrics, but subconsciously your system is taking it all in and it's having a huge effect on your mind. So if the lyrics are negative, that is going to have a very negative effect on your thinking, on how you perceive things. And they have research on this. This is not nobody's opinion. They have lots of research on this. So yeah, the music has a huge effect on everything about us, ev everything. Absolutely. Oh, you're preaching to the choir here. I'm around yeah. young people. <laughs> and um, yeah, and so it's, it, it, it's work teaching people how to um, maybe stay in the moment or, or not to go to what's so popular, maybe seek out a little bit more about what you might like. It's not a problem I had. Well, I did have to deal with it a little bit, but growing up, music was music and there wasn't a lot of negativity the way it is today. Yeah. Um, so it was different. But these days, well, I'm going to sound like the old lady again. So I'm <laughs> just going to leave it at that. But it's different. Now, let's get a little bit philosophical. If you could live in any decade, uh, past, uh, present or, or future, you know, just to go back, not stay, but to go back for a bit, see, where would you like to go? Is there anything that calls to you that you feel you want to mm. dip in and have a look around? That's an interesting question. The first thing that comes to mind for me is the, I kind of have a beef with social media and, and the whole addiction that it had created. I would say like before this time, you know, before the time of the devices, when people had more connection with each other, especially like the time that I was growing up, you know, you would go to someone's house if you wanted to talk with them, even though the houses had phones, right? But we would go and hang out and, you know, spend time with other people and, and all that. And all that is coming out of social media, you know, all, all of the depression, all of the anxiety, the feelings of inadequacy and all of that that came out of that. I feel like it affects everybody else, too. You know, even the ones that rarely you meet someone that says they don't have social media. So I believe that they are also affected by the other people that do have this addiction. You know, because we're hanging out with these people, sometimes they're family, you know, sometimes they're friends and we can see how much they, they are, you know, wasting their lives away, their health away in the devices. So I would say like any time before the, all of that showed up, you know, that we had more connection with each other. I, I love that. I, I try to still do it as much as I can. I try to avoid the devices as much as I can. And, and yeah, I, I would say any time before or, you know, once we get, is, if it's to talk about the future, once we get to a more, a resolution of all of this mess that we have created for ourselves, you know, but yeah, I would say the devices is the first thing that comes to mind for me. I would like to go back to a time where it's more people looking at each other and hugging and, you know, having a good time with each other rather than just with their faces on a device. That, that sounds quite nice. It is a very different time. You're absolutely yeah. right totally different time and even in in a sports event the only time you know we were at Wimbledon last year uh, or the year before was it pandemic anyway um <laughs> and people weren't looking at their phones because you just don't want to miss somebody on a court but that was the only time really you didn't see a lot of people looking at their phones because they were engaged I suppose at a football match is another time mm. You know, so what is that? That's investment in enjoyment of your of, of a sport or um, even at a concert, they're on their phone. So, yeah, it's a very different time indeed. Um, yeah. And yeah. I feel like the whole point of the whole thing was to create connection, right? But it seems like it's creating a lot of disconnection. 
people were not really hanging out with each other anymore unless it's through a device. I mean, it brings great things. Like we are able to do this now. I'm mean, in Brazil, you're in, in London, so that's great. You know, there's the benefits from it. But what I've been hearing about the people that are researching how detrimental they are for people's mental health and everything is the that the devices are evolving way faster than we are, than our own consciousness. So we are not mature enough to use the good that it offers and to not get so addicted and to not like harm ourselves so much as we have been doing, you know, with all the anxiety, depression, the feelings, inadequacy, not worthy and, and all that stuff. So it seems like we are not mature enough to be able to deal with the devices and just get the good out of it, but not, you know, hurt ourselves so much like we have been doing. Absolutely. And, and I think the arts are suffering a bit. Um, people like Marcel Proust and uh, I don't know, Steve, it, lots of people sat around writing the Shakespeare plays, works of art that we revere today. And where is it? I, I don't know. I'm sure some good art is being created. I may have to cut this out. <laughs> I'll probably get hate mail about this. But no, I, I'm sure some good art has been created, but really it's all about self-help now. Everybody's a guru. Everybody wants to write about how to do something. And, yeah. you know, so that's taken over, whereas you had to search for those books in the early 90s. They, you know, mm -hmm. now it's everyone. So I'm looking for works of art, uh, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, but I think it's because we're distracted. We're so distracted. Uh, by a little tiny device that where's the creation, where's the, yeah, there's a lot mm -hmm. of that. Sure. So, right, so natural music. Um, if someone were interested in sound therapy, what would you tell them? Um, mm -hmm. I know you do a consultation with people. You would, you know, you would consult with them first to find out why. But what are some of the things that you tell them? Or do they come to you with, expectations or you know a, a list a grocery list of what they want to work on sometimes sometimes they have a specific things going on that they are researching to try to find a resolution to try to find some relief from something and they they come across sound a lot of the times they come across my teacher the person that I got trained from and she has great talks out there explaining the whole concept how it works she's very great at uh, exposing the science behind the whole thing. I try to remember pieces and bits of the, the stuff that I learned, but it's like, it's so con it's so dense and it's so much information, so, you know, so I can remember some pieces and bits of it, but she is very good at, at expressing the message in a way that's like very basic that people can understand. So they go to her website and they search for a practitioner and they find me there. So a lot of the times when they come, they are already somewhat educated on how the method works. And they have something that is out of alignment that they were already researching. That's how they came across the method. So a lot of the times they hear podcasts like this that I do, that I educate people a little bit on what the sound can do for them. And then a lot of the times they do come with already something that they have going on and they need relief from. And I do also get clients that are just curious that they hear someone talking about it. It can be a friend, a coworker, or some, or see a, a talk, you know, somewhere in some platform that they are navigating, and they see a talk that someone mentions it, and something clicks for them, and they get curious about it. So then they they reach out and they want to learn more about it. So I explain to them a bit more of how how it works on the body. What is it that they would be looking for? You know, working with the sound. What is it that they have going on? What would be like intentions that they would have, you know, for working with the sound? And it starts with education. It starts with getting them to understand that, you know, we're not doctors. We're not promising that we're going to solve all their problems. But what we do notice with the majority, if not all of the clients that we work with, is this aspect that I was saying of the release of the stress and tension that is causing whatever it is that they came as symptoms. There's always a root on some sort of rigidity within the system that is holding on to something that for whatever reason, it doesn't feel safe to release. You know, it can be a trauma from when you were three years old. I don't know. 
It can be something very little. It can be when you fell from your bike or something, you know, and the system holds on to that trauma that starts causing chronic pain or whatever, whatever it is, the, the misalignment within the body or the mind. It's coming from this, this holding on to this tension or stress that happened way back then. So once we see that the system was able to, with the input from the sound, the sound being so relaxing and, and so um, harmonized, with the system having that opportunity to relax so profoundly and releasing that stuff, they do notice the benefits afterwards. So it's like the majority of the people have something in mind that they are looking for. They have little pains here and there, or problems with sleeping or digestive, or just like anger, like full on anger. They notice that they're very angry and, and there's this accumulation of the anger that they can't express. And they notice that they get irritated by everything that's happening around them and all that. And they do come across it because of the benefits that people are reporting that they feel happier, that things still happen around them, like the world doesn't become perfect, but they become more aligned in their truth and things don't knock them off balance as much. And if it does, there's a recovery that's like way faster than before. You know, there are the people that's like, oh, I'm like this because like this thing happened 20 years ago, you know, like my spouse died or whatever, or, or left me or this thing or that thing but like way back when, you know, so now we notice that with people getting so aligned and balanced and the system getting so relaxed, things still happened, but there's this refracted uh, period of recuperation that you come back to your balance and you come back to groundedness and you deal with it. You know, you don't just sit there like, oh, but this is happening. I have all these symptoms and all this stuff going on. You just deal with it, you know, coming from a space of calmness and tranquility and groundedness. So that's across the board. Yeah, no matter what it is that they show up with, you know, the condition, the symptoms that they show up with, we notice across the board that they become more balanced, more aligned and in harmony with the whole body. Like I said, body, mind and spirit. And they become happier and more joyful because of that because they're dropping all the stuff that was holding them from feeling that way, from feeling happy, balanced, healthy, and feeling joy. Yeah. And it sounds like what you're saying too is that, yes, okay, sound therapy can help, but you do have to address what's the root, what's underneath it. And would that also mean, as a holistic therapist, that they may do sound therapy, but they may also go into therapy. They may have, or they may have acupuncture, or they may have reflexology, or mm -hmm. Reiki, or so. they may have, they may try several things. I always tell people, throw everything at it. Um, and I, I'm certainly never a proponent for just one thing. I think mm -hmm. people come into psychotherapy. With me, I, I say, try this, try meditation, do this, yeah. do this. Try it all. It's not just about psychotherapy and talking about your feelings. That mm -hmm. will you so far. You know, we can yeah. analyze it all day long. But if you don't do some other bits, it's yeah. not going to shift the body. And yes, body shifts in psychotherapy. Yes, it does. Yeah. But we have to get into the energy bit. So it sounds like what you're saying is, yeah, we can do you. you sound therapy is great, but try Try a bit of everything. Would that yeah. be accurate? Yeah, definitely. It, it's what we say is that you also have to show up. That's you it. know, yeah, because um, the sound will help your body to adjust and balance whatever it is out of balance because it's vibrating out of balance. So that the the sound will help your body come back into balance, into harmony. But the thing is that you have to show up. You are going to see a lot of the times. The people, they're receiving the session and they have huge insights of the patterns that they are living in that's causing whatever it is that we are addressing on, on, on the, in that moment in session. So those aha moments, those insights are bringing you information. What we look at it, we look at it as we are tuning the biofield around the body, right? That's why we, the, the method is called biofield tuning. So we are attuning to this field around the body that we believe that there's a lot of research showing this as well lately, that this is our memory. 
We think that is inside the brain, but there's not a place in the brain that you can find the memory. So we do believe that it is in our mind, that we are inside our mind rather than the opposite. And we are inside this biofield around our bodies that holds the memories and the experiences that, that we have lived. And so it is the lenses within which we perceive our reality because we have all these experiences here. I perceive one situation completely different than you perceive it because you bring your experiences to the table and I bring mine. So we are going to have two different perceptions on the same situation, right? And that's the reason why we believe that we have all this information that surrounds our bodies that is related to everything that we have lived so far. So when the sound comes and helps the body integrate that information and, and everything come into balance, into more wholeness, everything gets resolved. I'm, I'm losing a little bit the track of where I was going with this. So it was meant to happen. <laughs> I always believe it's meant to happen. If you lose track, I lose track all the time. Yeah, I'm to to use other methods, I right? Think other methods so what we see is that when you are receiving a session and you have this big insight of you know why this thing is happening that you came to treat in session it's some some sort of behavior that you that you are having that's coming from this information around your body it can be a trauma that's just sitting there that's driving your behavior now as an adult maybe a trauma from childhood that's driving our behavior now as an adult and it's causing this thing that we are treating so as you start treating what the sound is doing is reintegrating all of that information that we have around our bodies that's why we get the ahas that's why we get the, the understanding of things that we were kind of blocked and we couldn't really see it it was right there but we couldn't see it right and then you you bring in the sound to to help integrate all of this informa information that is surrounding your body you start realizing things but then again you don't do anything about it the sound it, it's not going to do the miracle for you like for me for instance my my biggest problem i worked in in so many things different layers of things throughout my healing journey this past decade right but my huge thing that was my huge concern was my addiction to alcohol that initiated that triggered my whole process my whole journey and and everything came after that things that i didn't even know that were detrimental to my health that were happening i didn't even know but because i needed to release this big thing first once I released the alcohol, I had the space to see other things that I needed to shift in my life, right? But that's the thing. I needed to drop a lot of friendship, you know, a lot of, a lot of places that I used to go to, a lot of things like my whole life has changed because my whole life was surrounded, was like I worked my way around the alcohol. So everything was related to it. All the jobs that I have, all the people that I knew, all, all of it was around alcohol, right? Because I started drinking very early and I got very addicted to it. Once I, I resolved that now it's time to drop it and I had all these modalities to help me, if I would continue to go to the bar and, and to the places where the alcohol was present and predominant, I wouldn't have been able to drop it to release it the way i did so there's a lot of things that it's on us that it's decisions that we must make like i need to stop going to certain places and hanging out with certain people so that i could move from the place where i was to the place where i wanted to be right so that was on me like there's no modality that's going to do that for me i got to make the decision and i got to take these steps and take action right and we talk about this with everything I also recommend people to do other practices, see another therapist if they feel the need to, or, or if we see that there's a need in there for that. We talk about meditation, we talk about journaling, um, take a look at how you are, we are you know, caring for the body, how much water are you drinking, what are you eating, and all that stuff, all that is involved, right? It's very holistic. But then I have people that talk to me about meditation. I can't meditate, you know, meditation is not for me and everything. And one of the first things that I say is this, have you made the decision yet that you are going to do it? Because if you tell me, oh, meditation, yeah, it sounds pretty cool, I'm going to try. Yeah, that's not happening <laughs> because you're just going to try, right? It's the permission to fail, to not do it and say, oh, but I have tried, right? But if you make the decision, I am going to do it because I see the benefit on it, you're going to work your way around it just for me it was extremely hard on, on in the beginning because it was the same thing i was filled with trauma and you know all those rea reactions and all of that stuff 
to sit quietly with myself was painful. But then because I have made the decision that I needed to change my lifestyle and I was going to, I kept researching. How do you do it when your mind is like just chaotic and decent and it's painful to sit with yourself? Then I came across the, the other opportunities. You can do walking meditation. You can go out in nature. You can do this thing and that thing. And I started doing that way because that's all that I could take back then because I was so disturbed. I was so, you know, full of wounds and, and very, very chaotic within and without and everything. So I started that way and little by little I grew into being able to sit for a couple of minutes and then I was doing that every day and then I noticed that I could sit for a little bit longer and now meditation is like I, I could do it several times a day like you know if I wanted because now it's pleasant now it's nice it really helps me and everything but it's the decision right that we must make we need to show up I feel like basically it comes down to the methods will help you but you definitely need to show up Absolutely. And meditate. That's a very good point because meditation is not for everyone. You know, people suffering mm -hmm. from uh, psychotic illnesses like schizophrenia. No, it's not good for you to meditate. Mm -hmm. uh, people who have certain other issues. No. Mm -hmm. And that's why mindfulness can be helpful for those. Yeah. People. Yeah. But Take right. those people out in nature. It's going to be excellent. So, so yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. If you make the decision that you want to do something around that to, to better yourself, you'll find a way. Yeah, you'll find a way to show up. Can I just quickly go back to the tuning fork just for a minute? Because I just did a video <laughs> entitled Trinkets Don't Make You Spiritual. I, um, I just felt there was so much emphasis on crystals. I love crystals, but I'm seeing this everywhere. And again, it's the Internet. Um, yeah wrong information and all sorts of stuff out there and i thought I, I i felt the move by spirit to do a video on it but i mentioned mm -hmm. tuning forks in it because i saw someone saying oh yes i you i hit they well i won't go into what they do but it was odd it was different so <laughs> i want to ask you somebody who's trained and who knows how to use a tuning fork Musician, the first time I saw Tuning Fork was um, my cousin was a bassist and bands and everything. So back in the day, a Tuning Fork was always around because they use it to tune their instruments. Yes. So I saw a Tuning Fork when I was really little and I love the sound. But why are Tuning Forks so helpful? Mm -hmm. it's, energy? It's, it's pretty much the same thing that it's doing to the, to the musical instrument because it's bouncing off the sound and giving the feedback. It's exactly what we're doing with the body so that we, we are tuning the body because we are receiving this, this feedback and we, were, we are working with it. So if the feedback is loud and clear and full and it sounds beautiful, we can see that we can continue to move the fork closer to the body. That's how we do it. We start it away from the body and we bring in this information that is on the field to integrate into the body. So if we notice that the sound is clear, it's like, it's almost like the path is clear. So we continue to move the fork. When there is a density in there that needs to be collected, for lack of a better word, we notice that the sound changes. The bouncing back of, from the body, it's, it's dull and, and it's kind of, you know, it's not full and alive and beautiful and clear. And then we notice that that's a density of energy right there on the field. It's this that I'm talking about. It's all this information around us within the field that surrounds our body. Some people call aura, you can call it whatever it is, but we're, we are calling now biofielding these researches because it has everything to do with uh, everything that's happening with our biology. It's related to this information around the body. So when there is an information there that wasn't integrated, and some people even say that it's similar to soul retrieval mm -hmm. because that information it's like an uh, like i said something that has happened you know it can have been like an accident some sort of trauma that wasn't integrated some people dissociate when when this stuff happens right they can't deal and they just dissociate so that they can move through the experience and then go back sometimes that information stays there in the field and it's what i was saying it's the lenses within which we are perceiving our reality it's passing through that experience so some people become very negative or or whatever it is the 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 result of that stagnation of energy there. 
When the sound is not moving through, we do something different. We bring a different fork, a different frequency to that area, or we just hang out with that same frequency that it is, depending on what's happening. So as we continue to apply that sound to that density, we notice that it starts dissipating. The vibration from the sound, it starts dissipating that density that was right there on your field. And dissipating that energy and bringing it back into the midline uh, center channel of your body brings it back into circulation the way that it was supposed to be because energy cannot be destroyed it can only be transformed into something else right so when we bring it back to be reintegrated and it goes back into circulation it's almost like it gets digested and so what happens is that that blockage that was causing the something that we are treating is not there anymore so with the free flow of energy throughout the body it, re it brings back the balance, the integrity of your whole system, and everything comes back into, into the way that that was supposed to be. So what we say is that the body now is tuned, just like the instrument would be. So now the body is vibrating in, in, in a frequency that is harmonic, that, that is harmonized, that is whole, that is, um, the word that I want to use is coherent. Now the body is vibrating in a coherent way. So when you strike a fork and you get it near the body again, you can see that when it bounces off of the body and comes back to the fork, you can see that it's loud, it's clear, it's open, it's beautiful, it sounds beautiful, it's pleasant to the ears. Sometimes it's not. When we find something in the field, it can sound like a squeak, like Aah! you know, or it can sound very dull, like you can barely hear, like it's inside a bottle or something. So you notice those differences, that's how we are trained to read this information, to know what do we do to bring that information back to the body to clear the, the path. That's why people notice that they feel more open, they feel lighter, because we are opening up space rather than all of this contracted you know, information that is stagnated within their field, not allowing for the free circulation of energy. We believe that the, the energy flows upwards and downwards through the midline of our body and coming up through the top of the head and the bottom of the feet circulating around our bodies like a donut formation. So if that is not clear, it's not flowing clearly both ways, there's something that's going to develop within the mind or the body or spirit, something is going to be out of harmony. So that's why the tuning fork, because it's tuning that back into harmony, into coherence. And once it is, that's how people feel the way they feel. Happy, lighter. They say, now I feel like I'm just flowing through life. There's no rigidity. Before, <laughs> they say, it seemed like I was dragging my body through life. You know, there was this heaviness and difficulty and, and all that. And now I feel like I just flow through life, like I'm hovering through life. <laughs> Lovely. Well, and you can see it in people's stature and their posture mm -hmm. and the way they walk. You can see it. Yeah. But yes. Mayara, one of the things I wanted to say to you was thank you so much for sharing your history and where you've come from and how you struggled and how you've moved through it as well. Because, you know, I believe that all of our experiences, the ones, well, some people believe we did call those experiences in, but no matter your beliefs out there, whatever you experienced was meant to be experienced for some reason. And it's mm -hmm. a part of our journey I believe on this earth plane. What I is your take? I was going to ask. What is your take on on that? Yeah, I do too. And now that's the interesting thing too. After doing so much work, especially with sound and meditation, I notice that I'm more open in that way. So what happens is that I feel more healed, more whole and complete, and less like wounded. It, and, and I feel like it's this openness that I'm talking about. Before, it was like everything that had happened to me, I needed to keep it to myself. There was a lot of guilt and shame is surrounding the whole thing. Doing this work and releasing this guilt and shame and all of that and becoming more okay with what had happened to me, it doesn't make the situations okay, but it detaches my emotional from it. And now I can talk about it without breaking down and I don't have to hide. You see, I don't have to compress. 
I don't have to become rigid. I can be open and express what had happened. And it helps me a lot because the clients get to resonate that I also had problems and, and I have moved through them with the use of sound and meditation and all the things that I share with them. Because if I present myself like as this happy version of myself that I am today, that I, I'm so light and you know just concerned with what's coming because I have so much trust and faith and all this state that I have placed myself, it's kind of like it's hard to resonate when the person is coming and showing up with a problem to solve, right? But then I express to them like, hey, I can help you because I come from a lot of problems. You know, all, all the levels of problems that you can imagine I've been through. So it helps for people to resonate, to know that I have overcome so many adversities. And it helps. It helps them. It helps me. I noticed that the more open I am and, and not too contracted about you know, my own experiences and my own life, the more things just flow. And then it's funny because it becomes that state that people talk about, like, th this is how life should be. It's when you think of someone and they give you a call, you know, you go out to do something and, and stuff just like opens up for you. Like you find money, you know, like on the, on, on the street and all that kind of stuff that it, that shows you that you are in the flow, you know, that you're just allowing life force to flow through you. You don't have too much rigidity that is contained, that is, you know, holding, holding, hold, there's too much force. And then it doesn't allow for things to just unfold, things to just happen. So yeah, I love to share all the things that had happened to me if the person find value in, in, in hearing it. And I noticed this difference on how much more open my whole life is in, in a way of things just coming to me compared to when I was very shameful and fearful and guilty about everything that had happened and I, and I was very contracted and I was keeping everything to myself and I was very ashamed to talk about it and, and all that stuff. I noticed that life was the same way. It was contracted and it wouldn't bring anything to my experience. It, life was hard, just like my clients tell me. Life was kind of a, more of a drag and it was heavier and it was more difficult. Everything was more difficult. And then I feel like now that I'm more open, things just show up like the right things at the right time, the right people, the right situations. It's just this nice flow. You know, even when sometimes things are difficult, the resolution is a lot faster and easier and all of that. So, yeah, it, it, it makes a huge difference when we finally open up and just allow, you know, just allow it to flow. I do agree with you 100 percent that the things that had happened to us taught us everything we know. I wouldn't know everything I know about trauma to help my clients if I haven't been through them myself. So I do believe that life is our school and we are learning from, if we pay attention, we are learning from all the lessons that come along, all the people that irritate us, all the situations, all those things are teaching us something. If we are open enough to be able to perceive it that way. Yes, that's big. And, you know, we touched on social media just briefly earlier. What we're talking about, viewers, listeners out there, we're not talking about sharing all your personal details on social media and being that open that can be detrimental to you it can yeah, yeah it can attract negativity uh, one bad comment could ruin your day or your life so yeah. this is not what we're talking about i i what i'm talking about is mayara is a therapist she works in this field so she's chosen to share parts of her life, parts mm -hmm. of her life that she finds helpful to her clients. Mm -hmm. That's it. Sim simple as that. Um, yes. Because we want to be clear for people um, because I do find there's some toxicity in social media with everybody sharing really deep personal issues and then being harmed by it. Um, yeah. Some people, as you very succinctly stated, not everyone, we're just not mature enough. We're not at that stage yet to have this wonderful technology and use it responsibly. Um, mm -hmm. One word, Twitter. <laughs> so we're not, there. <laughs> we're not there yet. Yeah. People can't restrain themselves. Um, but it's no different from the kitchen table talk that families do. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, they say everything under the sun, but it's not yeah. social media. There's a huge mm -hmm. difference what you say. Energetically, okay, we know it affects things, but it's not on, in the masses. So, yeah, just wanted to clear that up out there. 
Yeah, true. Yeah. That's yeah. that's be, true. Be aware. Don't share every single. Be just very aware of what you share. We're talking about in the therapeutic context. That's all. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you just it, it, the the way you said it. It's perfect. Just be aware. Like be aware of your intention. Why are you doing it? Right. I started sharing my story with people to be able to help them to resonate so that we could do the therapy together. If you are going, and, and I don't necessarily do it on social media, I don't, I barely use social media. I like to have some information there for when people come to my website and they want to see something on social media to see. Even people say to me, I saw that you were legit because you had social media. I was like, okay, so I'll, I won't cancel because I, I'm not present there. And for me, I would delete the accounts, but I leave it because of that. People like it as confirmation that I'm a real person and that I'm doing real work and all that when they come to me first time. Um, but what I'm saying is that if you are going to go on social media and share, be aware of your intention. What is it that you are looking for? Like, do you want, you know, people to pity you? Do you want to solve anything with it? What is the, the outcome that you are looking for when you go and share? So becoming aware of that, it's, it's huge. It's key. It's huge. It is key. And we're all trained differently. We all work differently. Now, just off course, a couple of more quick questions before we go. Um, the far out random question. What do you <laughs> own now that doesn't work? What do I own that it doesn't work? Because it no longer works. Doesn't work. Hmm. What do I own that it doesn't work? It, it's kind of funny because uh, we are in this phase that I just told you. We came to Brazil for some time from America, and now we are about to go to New Zealand. So I'm kind of like, we, I don't have much stuff. I got rid of everything. So what doesn't work? I guess sometimes insecurities that come up, it's, it's what comes up for me. You know, insecurities that I had as a kid because of a variety of different things that were happening in my environment when I was a kid, that sometimes they still pop up. So when you say that, and I can't really think of anything um, physical because I'm not very materialistic, I own very little. And I love that because then I get to travel a lot. I live here, I live there, I live there because I don't have too much attachment. But it makes me think on the internal level, I notice that even after a decade of work, I still have insecurities that come up every now and again. And I have to take a look at them and work with them. So it's like it's a continuous work that I don't think we ever get into a finish line. You know, this internal work, you know, of, of growth, of healing, it's continuous. It gets better, it gets easier as we go. Like I have clients that sometimes tell me like, dude, I don't know what to do. I think I'm losing my mind. Like, when is this going to end? Like, when is it going to get easy? And I'm like, dude, you are about to. Probably that's why it's so hard because it's, a, it's about to shift, right? But there's always stuff that comes up. So I would say probably like insecurities that every now and again come up and I'm like, what are you doing here? I thought I have dealt with you. <laughs> yeah, and that's a really good answer actually because I think insecurities pop up to remind us and say, hey, look how far you've come. You're not even yes. there anymore. Look, look, look. <laughs> I think that's the way I've chosen to see is now and again, it, something will happen and it'll take you right back to age six, age yes. whatever. And you say, whoa, whoa, whoa. But then it's like, wow, that's not happening anymore. Or yeah. That, so, yeah, I think I, I was saying to my friend Kelly, I'm so grateful for memory. So great mm. because, because, you know, I, I do see a lot of people with dementia sometimes. And yeah. so, so I'm going to be very grateful for whatever memory comes up, be it a yeah, true. whatever one. For now, I'm I'm grateful. I'll have to just bat those bad memories away because they do. Yeah. they do exist. Yeah, yeah, it's thank true. you for that. That's um, that's a different take on it. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm the same as you. I recycle four or five times a year. I haven't got anything that doesn't work. Okay, um, <laughs> so <laughs> well, wow, I, there's so much in what you've said today. How can we then in your mind how can we all live more enriched more loving more powerful more calm more helpful mm. lives mm. that's beautiful i would say 
spend more time with yourself so that you can see your own patterns where you are coming from if you are conscious of your behaviors or if they're all just coming from programming from society from culture all that stuff that a lot of the times they're just lies it's not necessarily the truth of who we are so i just i would say that i would say the 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 power of spending more time with ourselves which to me is the meditation the practices that i do i spend a lot of time with myself in silence not necessarily thinking and not necessarily only meditating i do my meditations every day and all that but just time in silence doing something that is a no-brainer you know that that i could have some noise going just turn it off just be with myself to notice myself to perceive myself become more self-aware so i would say the key here would be yeah become more self-aware and then we are more able to show up in that way, in that beautiful way that you just described. Because if we are not, we are just running on programming. We are not even aware of what we are doing. So then it's hard to be loving, to be all these beautiful things. But when we start becoming more aware, we can consciously become those things. So yeah, I would say some time with self in silence. Wow, that was beautiful. That, and what yeah. great advice as well. I agree. Mm. And many people, as you said earlier, difficult to sit with yourself sometimes. Yeah. But if you can master that, um, there's lots of sayings out there about that, then I yeah. think you're halfway there. And that is why meditation of practice is so important, so helpful. There must be a reason why people yeah. have been doing it for centuries and centuries and centuries. It's true. Of way. And it works. Yeah. Yeah, Myara, thank you so much. I think I just hit the desk. Sorry, guys, the noise out there. But thank you so much. That was so beautiful. And we've learned so much about sound therapy today. It's wonderful. All of Mariah's links, I say Mariah. She did show me how to say it. It's Myara. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the links will be all in the show notes. Go to her website. Also, take a course as well because there's lots there. If you've never had sound therapy before, this is a good place to start. And mm. she also offers like a free session where you can kind of get to see what it's all about even, you know, before you jump right in. Mm. But it, it really can resonate with a lot of people. So I would suggest you go and try it. Um, and you do retreat, you do lots of different things. I, I saw some videos, you've got a YouTube, and you do go out in the community and mm -hmm. you know, give talks with people. I saw you giving one talk to the elderly or pictures of that. It's wonderful stuff. So what's next? What's coming up next for you? So I did a lot of that while we were still living in the U.S. I did a lot of events. I did a lot of educating people on what the process is, a lot of group sessions in person and all that. And then after the pandemic, that kind of slowed down a little bit. Now I have been spending some time in Brazil, visiting family, doing some stuff out here. Very interesting to come back. I was in the US for 12 years. So coming back now, it's been quite interesting, but we're not staying permanently. So in a, in a couple of months, we'll be relocating to New Zealand. So I have already been, I came back from there a little over a week ago and i have already connected to the community so i'm already looking i already got an office we'll go back to working out of an office again like i did in the us did not want to do it in brazil but we'll go back to do it in new zealand and we'll get into the events again doing the events in person out there and the online events that people can join from just anywhere so we'll go back to that towards by probably towards the fall um, yeah, towards the end of the year, you, sh you, should, you should start working to, to go back to doing community events and, and all those things. I love to do it. I love to educate what the method is and give like a sample session so that people can feel it. It's fascinating to just like listen to the feedback afterwards. You know, people trying to word something that they've never felt before and is struggling to find the right words and then other people talk about something else and they're like oh my gosh it's exactly what i'm trying to explain and also how different the experience can be like i can do a group of i did a group of 30 people in florida 
And it was so interesting how their experience was so different one from another. And they were so close to each other because it was 30 people in someone's living room that she invited me to this event. And I did 30 people and they were super close to each other. And when we went listening to the feedback afterwards, their experiences were completely different one from, from the other, which is like fascinating because it's like we were talking about, we all bring our own experiences to the table, right? So we were going to respond to the sound in completely different ways. So yeah, I will definitely go back to doing the events, to getting into the community, but now in New Zealand. So all the online stuff, everybody is welcome from all over the world. But if you want to do it in person, I will be out in New Zealand in the next couple of months. Wonderful. Yeah, James did say she's moving all over the place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so New Zealand, right. I Early in the podcast, I interviewed a lady from New Zealand, and she does all meditation and everything. So I know it's big there, and people are really tuning in. So you obviously are on your path. It's very clear as you talk about it. It's what you're meant to do. There's just no doubt. And so mm -hmm. I'm wishing you well. You don't really need it because I can see that you're just going to, it's going to be fantastic. So it's wonderful, though, when you have that clear direction and when you know it's right. Um, yes. And Brazil will, will always be within you. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and what a wonderful place as well. So, yes, it's so much energy. Wow. Um, wow. Thank you so much. Thank you again. So thank you for taking the time and really loved speaking to you today. And yes, I hope you come back once you're all settled in and move to New Zealand. We can talk about things, how things are going there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the platform to be able to educate and, and get people filled in on how everything works. I, I do appreciate it. And thank you so much. And good luck with everything too, with the podcast, with all your guests and everything. And yeah, let's do it again. I, I love doing this. I love talking about this stuff and, you know, getting people to expand like their knowledge on the whole subject. It's great. I have fun. So yeah, let's do it again. I love that. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.